Hello again. Okay, so finally we get to the derivative of root functions. Now, what do I mean about a, uh, when I talk about a root function? Well, I'm talking about this function. Okay, where we've got some square root of x and that is being multiplied with k. Okay, now I can also rewrite this as k x to the power of a half. I hope you remember that. Okay, and at the end of this uh, uh, lesson, you'll you'll notice that it doesn't matter what this exponent is. Any rational exponent there, we are going to make a general conclusion when it comes to that. But but before we actually jump into that, let's just remind ourselves what did we say before of formats like this. Okay, before we say that this the, the sorry not. If, if this is my function, then my derivative can be found by multiplying n to the coefficient and then subtracting 1 from the exponent. Okay, now this we've only shown to be true when n is an element of integers. Whether it's positive or negative numbers, we, we showed that that is true. Now, now we don't have an integer anymore, we have a fraction. Okay, so we want to know, is it also true if n is an element of rational exponents, any rational exponent? And uh, that is what we're going to see. Is it, is it true for, for this as well? Okay, so let's jump into that. Now, if I wanted, if this is now my function, I'm going to use this fx now. If that's my fx, let's find the derivative from first principles. Remember, the derivative from first principles is solving this limit when h tends to 0 of fx plus h minus f of x divided by h. Okay, so remember my fx is equal to k times the square root of x. So first step, let's substitute our function in. So this function, f x plus h means in the place of x I replace x plus h of k square root x plus h minus f of x is just k times square root x. Now please remember that there is absolutely nothing you can do to simplify this square root just on its own. For example, I cannot say that the square root of x plus h is equal to the square root of x plus the square root of h. That would be saying that x plus h to the power of a half, because that's what this is, is equal to x to the power of a half plus h to the power of a half. In other words, using the distribution rule for the exponent. It doesn't work like that, not at all. Okay, You can only do that if it was x times h okay, to the power of a half. Yes, that is true. This is not true and that's not true. This would be true. x to the power of a half, h to the power of a half. That is true, but it's not true for that. And I can simply show you by showing you x plus h to the power of 2. We, this is not equal to x squared plus h squared. We know that. We know that this is equal to x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. How did we find that? We wrote out these two brackets, um, or this bracket as x plus h, x plus h, and then did our bracket multiplication. The problem when I have this is, well, how do I visually do this? Or how, This doesn't mean multiplying out two brackets, okay? So this is simply a notation for, for writing that. So in this case, there's nothing I can do to simplify that, so just keep that in mind. Okay, and let me just... Uh, delete this because I'm going to need that space okay so in my next step I'm going to okay take out a k as a common factor okay and uh, you'll see why I do that in just a minute just to simplify this expression a little bit it will save me an extra step later on okay divided by h now, what are we going to do? What can I, because remember what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to somehow cancel this h. So somehow in the numerator, I must get h as a factor. The only h in the numerator is inside this square root. And the only thing I can do to eliminate a square root is to square it. 
and that is why I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator with a special uh, bracket called the conjugate. Now I wonder if looking at the conjugate you can define it for me. Okay, Let me show you if I was working with s minus t and I want to multiply it with its conjugate I would multiply with s plus t and the answer I would get is s squared minus t squared. Okay, So if I were to multiply with s minus t I would get s squared minus 2st minus t squared and the problem would be I would have this middle term that does not have squares in them but if I multiply with a conjugate then I only have two terms and both terms are being squared so and that's great for this because I want to square this term and I want to square that term so I multiply with a conjugate okay and I'm sure you can see when I multiply with a conjugate I'm actually creating the difference of two squares now I'm not just allowed to do that I can only do that if I multiply the denominator and the denominator with the same expression or value or term whatever you want to call it okay I multi I must multiply the same factor in the numerator so that when I cancel those two I would still have my original expression okay but I don't want to cancel them I want to simplify this and that's when I see the following now I get the limit of h tending to 0 in the numerator I now have that k and now this bracket becomes square root of x plus h squared minus the square root of x squared and that's brilliant because that does exactly what I wanted to do I want to get rid of the square root so I can work with the terms inside there okay in the denominator however I am not going to simplify because I already have what I want in the denominator I want h as a factor so I don't need to simplify anything there I'm going to keep it just like that okay okay now we must simplify the numerator this bracket inside here to see if we can actually get to where we want it to be okay let's see okay so we have k still a little coefficient there all the time this term becomes x plus h minus x and isn't that absolutely beautiful okay x minus x gives me 0 so in the numerator I now only have and I won't skip any steps to try and not confuse you as least as I possibly can okay I will have k times h is the only thing left in this bracket so I don't need the bracket anymore divided by I only need brackets if there's terms inside here there's only one term which means it's a factor okay so h times square root x plus h plus square root x and this is what we've wanted all along we wanted a single term in the numerator single term in the denominator both with h's so that they can cancel and the reason why I want to cancel is because I want to substitute h with 0 but I can't substitute it with 0 while it is a factor in the denominator because that will make the whole denominator 0 so as soon as I cancel it now there's a 1 there and not an h anymore so now I can substitute h with 0 and you might say but wait h is still in the denominator wouldn't it make the denominator 0 well let's see if I substitute then I don't need my limit anymore over x plus h is now 0 so it's just x plus square root x is my denominator 0 no it's not as a matter of fact it's this beautiful 2 square root of x's that's being added so obviously this is simply and here's our final answer absolutely beautiful 2 square root of x okay now let's go and rewrite this well let's actually say if I had this is the derivative if this was my function okay question is is it still true 
that if I write this in uh, that power form as a power function, so k x to the power of a half, okay, let's see if we apply our uh, derivative rule for power functions, this multiplying the exponent to the front and subtracting one from the exponent, what do we get? Do we get the same answer then there? Let's see, okay, so for the derivative, Let's multiply a half in front. So I get a half times k is k over 2 times x to the power of, now a half minus 1 is negative a half. Now we know negative exponents means divide. So I must divide k with x to the power of a half. So k gets divided with 2 and k gets divided with x to the power of half okay now if we are not allowed to write fractional exponents then we know well a half simply means square root of x and look at that it is exactly that and this is our final conclusion if fx is equal to some coefficient multiplying x where x where my exponent n, where n is any rational number, okay, any rational number, then the derivative of fx would equal n times k times x to the power of n minus 1. Now sometimes, though, actually most of the time, they'll tell you to write your answer with positive, okay, exponents and non-fractional exponents so that just means you you have to in the end have no halves all the halves you must change to square roots or cube roots or whatever okay so I know I've only showed this now for a half and uh, to show it for something like a cube root of X is a little bit more complicated to show it as um, <laughs> as this is 10 times more complicated than that. So I don't want to confuse you. I'm just going to show you this one. And uh, and, and trust me uh, when I say you can do this now for any rational number. Okay, that's me for uh, finding the derivative of power functions. I think the next couple of videos will probably look at a bunch of examples and just show you how absolutely simple this is. See you there.